Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Dexter Season 7 Thoughts That was some finale. Okay, so I guess to an extent the detection risk for Dexter's secret, and now Deborah's secret, has been greatly diminished, possibly eliminated, but maybe someone will further investigate what happened to La Guerra, although she she may have been the last who kind of really believed that Dokes wasn't the Bay Harbor Butcher. Quinn did seem a little suspicious of Dexter when the whole Sal Price, the, the holes in his story, or the, the odd elements in his story. Now, other elements of the finale, the the whole thing with Hannah, the the fact that she's now out there, I can't wait to see what they do with her in the next season. I do hope they do more with her than they did with Lewis in this season. Now, the the her leaving the, the flower, and she did say goodbye, Dexter. At that time, she, she did already have this idea of, I mean, she, she said to, I think Arlene was the name, not Sarlene, Sarlina, Laraline Lumpkin, one of those names. I'm going to go with Arlene. That she couldn't be in jail. So, and, you know, she was in Judy, so she kind of, she has some inkling of, some, some idea of what that's like. And so, so yeah, when she said goodbye to Dexter, she meant goodbye. So, I, I figured the, the flower plant thing is just an extension of that, maybe to let him know she is out there. And the it was, it was very clever having Arlene pass the needle. And she would know, she would know something to, you know, cause a, a seizure, given her past proclivities towards, was it heroin? It was something... Yeah, one of the one of the harder drugs, and the I I like this end note of you know the the show often ends on these or a season will often in the show will often end on this note of this is what we'll explore in the next season or this is you know yeah like they say here is this a new beginning or the beginning of the end. And with this here, this thing of, you know, who are we, what, you know, where will this, where will this go? Will Deborah really keep being able to, I mean, she really went through a lot this season as far as Dexter's secret goes. From finding him at a Bay Harbor Butcher crime scene right up to killing to protect him at a Bay Harbor Butcher crime scene. They really have got to stop meeting like that. The Always fun to see Jamie be more tough. I'm pretty sure this isn't the first time we've seen her, but it has been a while since I watched the earlier seasons, the season before this one. Now, the 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 thing with you know killing for the normal reasons was nice you know the, even before this season Dexter had sometimes gone you know stretched the code maybe even gone beyond it once or twice but here he really does you know I mean killing I don't remember his name but Hannah's father that was beyond the code to to our knowledge he never killed anybody and, you know, 
killing La Guerta. Ultimately, he didn't fire the shot, but he was going to. Also not within the code. It, it became... Excuse me, it, it went more towards... Excuse me, Hannah, who's a terrible influence on me, clearly, of this thing of killing to protect themselves. And, you know, La Guerta was in part to protect himself, also protect Deborah. And killing Hannah's father was to protect Hannah. Now, the, the thing with, you know, a killer and a liar was, was also quite clever. And, I mean, to, to a certain extent, you know, being a killer, you kind of have to be a liar too, which is, of course, not to say that being a liar you might kill as well. Or is it? The, the, the Dokes clips were a nice touch. This thing of, you know, kind of this is where we started. And this was what Dokes is, or, you know, this is where the suspicion of Dexter started. And what would Dokes... Yeah, La, La Guerta carrying on with Dokes. Yeah, his suspicion of Dexter. And that really, the, the thing with the, the camera of the, the gas stations, that, yeah, Deb is severely implicated by that, which actually, one would really hope that they found that, that DVD and that no one else has particularly seen it or else they will <laughs> they will have to do more in order to keep the, the the secret that they now share safe and the the way that Dexter frames Maria with you know for for a little while I thought maybe she kind of framed him but I guess she really just did think that she had now found you know the, the conclusive evidence that he really was the butcher and yeah but the yeah it was it was very clever the you know the the shirt is from back then and the blood on it as well and the wallet and this whole thing now I, I like how the, the season deals with Deborah having to deal with what Dexter really is and this gradual progression. At first she just sees him kill and it's this thing of you know, he came at with you all saw it, he came at with with a knife and then she starts processing you seemed really in control of what was going on. You it sounded like you knew what you were doing and yeah, the this whole thing of you know, yeah, she realizes that he's the the Bay Harbor butcher, and the and and Laguerta finding the blood slide, you know, she realizes that Dokes couldn't have been the butcher. Because it's, you know, it's that thing of, it couldn't have been a copycat because that was a detail never released to the public. So it would have to be someone, Miami Metro, and, yeah. And, you know, Masuka says right to her face, you know, Dokes was the Bay Harbor Butcher. Classy as always. And, you know, but, but yeah, the, the ghost of Dokes passed comes back to haunt Dexter. Now, it was a lot of fun to see Ray Stevenson on here, you know, the Punisher, one seasoned vigilante meeting another, and the whole Ukraine Mafia thing was quite good. It was slightly convenient the way, I mean, I guess it was resolved when Quinn shot, what was it, George? The, the owner of the club 
and yeah, the, the whole thing of, you know, near the end, the, you know, what, what was his name? Isaac was no longer with the Brotherhood. So there was this thing of, yeah, I, I actually, I really figured that that would just free him up for, you know, for Dexter to kill, but yeah, then they have this uneasy alliance instead, which, that, that was great. And the whole thing would, you know, if that were true, I'd be dead by now. Very nice exchange. And, you know, he assures us he's a man of his word, much like Heather's Joker, Heath Ledger's Joker, and Sark. And he ends up getting a burial, let's see, with Victor. Very nice detail. And, and the shot, you know, pulling back and we see all the blood that, you know, he really, yeah, he, like he said, we both know that I'm not going to survive this, and yeah, he really bled out. Now, the, the last season's finale was, you know, one of the biggest cliffhanger endings of a season finale, so I'm really glad, I feel like they they lived up to that. It, we we really got a proper exploration here of you know Deborah. I mean she was she was gone going to tell him that she was in love with him, and then finding him like that. And this whole thing of you know I mean we've seen before we've seen what he thought was going to happen in that situation. We saw a couple of different takes of that, in fact. And the, you know, this one was, there was a little bit of a mix of a couple of the, the ones, so, so that was nice. And, yeah, it's, it's that thing of they, they've known each other their entire lives, basically. I think there was a little bit of an age, yeah, a few years that they didn't know each other, but otherwise, their entire lives. And... Yeah, her finding him like that. Obviously, they're gonna have, they're gonna have words, and yeah, it was very interesting to see sort of where she would land on on that. Now, the whole thing with Lewis, I, you know, the the thing of him trying to ruin Dexter's life was, you know, nicely done, and this thing of, you know, it was kind of where you expected it to go, or at least in the general direction of what you expected him to go from the end of last season. And, you know, we, you know, we see him as a full-on nerd toy collector, the dude vlogs about things he's passionate about. What kind of idiot does that? And the, but, but yeah, you know, it's very easily resolved, you know, a couple of episodes later with, you know, this very sudden killing of him, which both, you know, very conveniently closes off the revenge plot and sends the Ukrainian mafia towards Dexter. I guess we're not going to follow up on the thing about how he stole his company. I mean, I guess it just works as an explanation. You know, this is not the first time he's done this. And, I don't know, I guess the company will be fine without him. You know, the, the next person doesn't even have to ruin the previous owner's life to get it. But, I don't know, I suppose it could be further explored next season. The whole thing with, you know, him stealing the company and... Yeah. Now, I did think you know I I like how with you know Quinn is no longer that much of a threat to Dexter with you know I mean although he's no longer with Deborah since that was kind of where that got closed off somewhat but you know. He doesn't fully trust Dexter, and like I mentioned earlier, he did wonder 
about these, you know, the odd details of the, you know, the, the, the two statements don't completely match, match up, you know, Jamie's statement and Dexter's. Now, and Lewis, you know, you know, the, the moron doesn't even, you know, delete the, the footage of him, you know, with, with the prostitute, and, you know, it's like, you were wearing the t-shirt that I gave you for your birthday. You know, yeah, dude, wow. It's, it's one of those things of, you know, a guy just trying to explain himself out of the mess he got himself into relating to a relationship and just missing such an obvious thing. But yeah, dude, just delete the vlog, re-record it. You know, I mean, yeah, and you know, he goes, and it's not cheating if you pay for it, dude. Look, if you were in different area codes, then we, you know, then maybe. I like the whole thing with with Spelzer of the, you know, this Greek mythology, the Minotaur and the maze. Just don't let Spoonie find out about it thing, you know, that was, yeah, that was, that was a pretty cool concept, and, you know, as we find out when we see his, the, the masterpiece maze, is that he's not trying, he's not only out to kill bar girls, but also any epileptics in the audience. Now, I, I like how he becomes the sort of chess piece bargaining chip between you know, it's sort of this struggle between, you know, Dexter and the system. You know, Deborah is determined to prove that Dexter shouldn't have to kill. You know, there's there's sort of two parts to that. He, she doesn't want him to kill. You know, she doesn't want him to do a bad thing because they're siblings. And then there's this thing of you know, if, yeah, she, she doesn't want to believe that the system, you know, she knows that the system isn't perfect, but she doesn't want to think that it actually needs vigilantes. And, yeah, the, you know, it, it goes back and forth. It seems like the system will deal with him, but then, you know, He's, he's out and quite unrepentant and, you know, it ends up with Dexter winning that, yeah. Now, I suppose, and Quinn screws another person of interest. This one's even undercover working against him. Yeah, dude, seriously. And I guess that also kind of closes off with the, you know, she goes to Vegas to start a new life, you know, which, you know, that works. I mean, I, one could understand why she doesn't really want to be around the, yeah. Now, the, you know, between Mike Lewis and the bartender suicide, the Ukrainian Mafia guys are terrible at cleaning up their crime scenes. They, I mean, they sort of try, although, yeah, not really with Mike, but they are just not very good at it. And we get more homicidal and or violent tendencies of, you know, fantasies of Dexter, in this case, because, you know, he can't kill because Deborah yeah. And, you know, Deborah goes on to protect Dexter from La Guerta with, excuse me, following him, following her along the investigation. Excuse me, hiding the wedding photo, that whole thing. Now, I like the, the whole thing with Hannah right from that first meeting there's some sexual tension and it's like yeah that's 
that's potentially awkward with you know her opening her mouth and there's high humidity in there and yeah <laughs> you do this for a living <laughs> yeah the and yeah the the whole thing of you know she might be the best romantic partner for Dex and the you know yeah as as we see more and more of them together I mean they are so sweet together and right when you realize that it's like alarm bells going off something horrible is going to happen there so yeah right writings on the wall there and the and you know Deborah wants him to kill Hannah and you know he does men's this thing of you know that was not an easy request for me to make you know now the I, I like the whole thing with you know Quinn you know will he return to being a dirty cop or will he stay clean this time with you know trying to rescue Nadia and yeah this you know yeah try, trying to rescue her trying to keep her safe and at the same time yeah wanting to stay clean and I kept throughout the season every time Batista mentioned the restaurant I was like you know the whole thing with you know so and so many days left before retirement I was like dude's gonna bite it before the end of the season it's just I guess they didn't go with that because it would be too cliche. Now, and you know, Quinn puts the dirty money towards Angel's restaurant, and, you know, makes it okay kind of thing. Um, it was cool to see a little bit of Astro and Cody again, although not a lot happened. I don't know if we're gonna get more of them the next season. I mean, it wasn't really. I guess they're still there. We just didn't quite see them, or at least I don't think it was mentioned that they went back. And the thing with, uh, you know, her smoking pot to try to relax, and you know, she doesn't feel at home anywhere, was a nice little thing. And it's not the first time we see Aster the rebellious teenager rebelling rebellingly now I thought it was a nice twist that Isaac was gay and that Victor was you know his partner the whole thing yeah quite surprised me and really explains why the you know why the determination? Now, and the the back and forth between Isaac and Dexter on love and relationships was quite good. It was cool how Laguerta kept getting closer and closer to Dexter, you know, finding the boat, the not buying the evidence plant and yeah and I mean when when she enlisted Tom we knew that you know I mean he supported both Morgans in the past and it was uh, yeah but but at the same time he did really try you know Dexter suddenly realizes he's interrogating me and we again see Dexter when pushed into a corner sort of fights back you know the the fangs come out with you know he and with Tom he just says no wait there's this one thing that I never said I was afraid of dokes so I never said that there was this really incriminating thing about him you know but with LaGuerta and that interrogation he straight out comes out and says you know 
You have a vendetta against me. You just won't accept that. Yeah. I do really call BS on, you know, Isaac killing three people and basically leaving it, you know, unscathed. Yeah. I'm not sure he could have gotten away with that even in war zone. I like the whole thing of, you know, will, you know, will the real Dex scare away Hannah and this thing, of, you know, like he says, she accepts both sides of me. Now, I liked how, you know, the, the arson investigator, he was creepy and strange, but it was too obvious for him to actually be the, the arsonist. You know, I did wonder if maybe he was the partner, but uh, yeah. And the thing of, uh, yeah, the... You know, the, with the arsonist, it you know Hannah has pointed out that Dexter is just trying to. You know, it's a it's a get out of responsibility free card. The the dark passenger. So, you know, and he's he's saying to, you know, you can't just blame this on Bobby. You're the one who's doing this. And then he's like, I can't kill this guy, and he gives him over to the system. Now, I the the whole thing with Hannah's father was really I mean that was an intense episode I mean we really only got the one episode with him and you know we go from okay he's back but Hannah's not quite sure if she's you know I mean this is a guy who really really hurt and abandoned her as a child fairly literally, you know, the three days in a hotel room by herself, or was it a motel? The, the hotel no-tell. And, you know, yeah, he's like, you know, I need money, and then, you know, okay, fine, I'm, you know, you don't have to give me money, and he crashes the, you know, the truck into her place, and you know, tells her, like, you're the reason your mother's dead, and and then we find out that he was the one giving Sal the secrets. Yeah, and the part where he references nearly drowning his daughter, right, in, right with Harrison right there, and, you know, leering like a creepy old man, which he is, and, you know, at Jamie, yeah. Now, I suppose that might, I did quite like the, you know, there was a real sense that Dexter and Hannah might have a future together. The, yeah, they, they really seemed, it really seemed to work out for, for a while there, but then she did poison Deborah with, you know, the medication. I honestly thought when she insisted, you know, when I try to kill someone, they're dead. You know, I thought, could it have been Arlene? You know, but yeah, we, we did end up realized it really was her. So, I mean, she, yeah, she pretty much admitted to it to, to Dexter and in the prison. And it's this thing of, you know, who will he believe? I mean, we know from the past, Dexter has been quite consistent. When it's be between someone he might really, you know, a a killer or a, a fellow monster who he might really have something with, or his family, it's his family that he chooses. So once we realize that she really was a danger to to Deborah, it was pretty clear what his decision was, but it's this thing of who is he going to believe, you know, and will he investigate further? Now, I really like the the lead up to the finale, you know, the, the second to last episode of the season. You know, we have two killers out there who might give away, 
Dexter's secret, you know, Hector and Hannah. I mean, she did, he, she, the last thing we see with her is she, she tells Dexter, Dexter to his face, you should have killed me. So, you know, there's, that's quite ominous. And, uh, yeah, the, you know, Maria almost spots Dexter in the, yeah. And, you know, by then, Hector doesn't only have Dexter's face, which is plenty incriminating, he has his name. You know, I mean, Dexter even makes sure to correct him to make sure he has the right first name there. Now, I like the, you know, LaGuardia trap, the setting up a trap for Dexter. You know, obviously she wasn't going to accept the evidence plant. And the, yeah, pushing to get Hector released. And, you know, that's obviously also why she didn't go to Batista's friend. You know, she said to him, I don't really feel like going there. No, she feels like setting a trap for Dexter. And the, and the, you know, we didn't see her go through with it, but when she said to Tom, don't worry, you'll get what's coming to you, she's not talking about money, clearly. Now, I suppose I will end on this note. When, actually, yeah, to, I like how this ends a new year. It's this thing of a new beginning, a fresh start, you know, you you make New Year's resolutions that you know you are never going to keep. And yeah, you know, will it be a fresh start for, for Dexter and Deborah, or will it be, you know, uh, Y2K or something, you know, will everything go south from here on out, from, from this, you know, New Year's? And yeah, and, and the, you know, before that, we see them celebrate Christmas, and Dexter, he says it about Santa. He says, we know Santa isn't real, so on Christmas, we're celebrating a lie. I can't help but think, but wonder if that was a subtle jab at Jesus and Christianity, because... <laughs> I would think that most Christians would, or you know, at least the more devout ones would maybe, that's a no true Scotsman, some Christians would argue that Jesus is who we celebrate on Christmas. So this thing of we celebrate a person who is alive, that was, yeah. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.